You're watching South Asia Newsline and here the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 12th of July. Indian Supreme Court grants interim bail to Arvind Kejriwal continues stay in jail. UN declares Afghan TTP largest terror group Pakistan regrets freeing out with terrorists. And Nepal PM Dehel loses confidence vote new coalition to form government. And now for all the details. Indian Supreme Court on Friday granted an interim bail to Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal in liquor policy case but he will stay in jail as he is arrested by CBI in the same case. The minister was arrested in March by Enforcement Directorate in connection with a money laundering probe relating to alleged irregularities in now cancelled Delhi Excise Policy 2021-22. Kejriwal denies any wrongdoing and calls the case politically motivated. AAP leaders claim that the interim bail ordered proved that the agencies and the government had made a false case in the alleged excise policy scam. मतलब ईडी अरविंद केजरीवाल के खिलाफ काम कर रही है सिर्फ इन्वेस्टिगेशन का काम नहीं कर रही है उनको फंसाने का काम कर रही है ऐसे में आज सुप्रीम कोर्ट की जमानत बहुत बड़ी बात है Kejriwal's decade-old Aam Aadmi Party has quickly risen in mainstream politics and voted to power in Delhi and in the northern state of Punjab. But its cloud is still relatively smaller than older parties. He was previously granted temporary bail by the top court for three weeks until June 2 to campaign in national elections. The UN in its latest report has declared the TTP, Tehreek e Taliban in Pakistan, the largest terrorist organization in Afghanistan enjoying operational and logistical support from both the Afghan Taliban and factions of Al-Qaeda terrorist network. The report highlights that the TTP remains active on a substantial scale in Afghanistan and carries out terrorist activities into Pakistan from there, frequently employing Afghan nationals. Moreover, it underscores Pakistan's concern that TTP has received sophisticated NATO-grade weaponry, including night vision capabilities since the Taliban assumed control, intensifying the threat posed by terrorist assaults on Pakistani border installations. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Interior Minister Mohsin Raza Nakhvi admitted that the release of jailed TTP militants in 2021 was a mistake. He noted that the surge in terrorism cases in the country being witnessed today was because of the release of those TTP prisoners. A peaceful protest by Baloch activists faced a massive crackdown by Pakistani police on Thursday, injuring several people, including women. Activists allege that police have also made arbitrary detention of peaceful protesters, many of whom require immediate medical attention. Pakistan police on Thursday arrested several peaceful protesters, demanding the release of Zaheer Ahmed Baloch in Balochistan's Quetta. The protest entered its 12th day on Friday. It also saw a violent crackdown by police officials on the peaceful demonstrations on Thursday causing severe injuries to those demanding Baloch's release. Prominent Baloch rights activist Maharang Baloch claimed that the police officials also barred activists from meeting the injured protesters. Taking to X, Baloch said more than 37 protesters, including those injured, continued to remain illegally detained by police officials. She added that the Baloch government will be held accountable for the violence against the peaceful demonstrators. Activists have long alleged that the ethnic Baloch people have been targets of so-called military operations ethnic profiling and abductions by the Pakistani state. They allege that the Pakistani state continues to exploit their natural resources. Activists further allege that the situation is not highlighted by the Pakistani media, compelling them to seek intervention through global platforms.
The Sri Lankan cabinet has approved a move to amend the constitutional articles concerning the terms of office of president and parliament. According to local media reports, the amendment will restrict the terms of both president and parliament to five years. While the terms for both offices are already five years, as per the 19th amendment passed after the 2015 presidential election, there was an ambiguity as Article 83 of the Lankan constitution states the office term could be extended by one year following a referendum. This amendment coming just months before the island nation's presidential election is however being criticized by the opposition lawmakers. Lamenting the decision by the cabinet, opposition lawmakers have said bringing a new amendment will only create confusion among the people over the presidential election. Bangladesh Nationalist Party Senior Joint Secretary General Ruhul Kabir Rizvi on Thursday alleged that there exists a telepathic relationship between Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the judiciary as her thoughts are reflected in court orders. Speaking at a press conference, the BNP leader questioned why the court issued an order over the reinstatement of quota in government jobs when the government revoked it by issuing a circular. He said instead of attending classes, students are protesting on the streets. The quota system in Bangladesh reserves more than half of government jobs for certain sections with around 30% reserved for the families of 1971 freedom fighters. The protesting students have said they will continue their protest until a permanent government executive order is issued abolishing the reservation system. They also staged a nationwide protest today. The reservation for first and second class jobs was abolished by the government following similar protests by students in 2018. However, earlier last month, a high court in Bangladesh ruled against the 2018 government order, reinstating the quotas in government jobs. Nepali Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehel lost a confidence vote in Parliament on Friday, paving the way for a new coalition by CPN, UML and Nepali Congress to form the government. Dehel was required to undergo the trust vote following the withdrawal of support by KP Sharma Oli-led CPN, UML earlier this month. The Oli-led party, which was the largest party in the ruling coalition, formed an alliance with Nepali Congress on July 3rd, pushing Dehel to lead a minority government. With 258 members present in the parliament, Dehel, who had survived four trust votes in the last 20 months, could only secure 63 votes, while 194 votes against him. Prior to seeking the trust vote, Dehel criticized the UML and Nepali Congress coalition and said the two parties had formed the alliance out of fear rather than shared principles. He said if the two parties formed the government, it would push the nation towards regression. Heavy rains in Nepal's Chitwan district on Friday triggering landslides has swept two buses with at least 65 passengers on board into a river. Rescuers on Friday searched for at least 62 missing passengers as they were seen paddling on a lifeboat against a fast-flowing river, searching for missing passengers. Three passengers survived with minor injuries by jumping off the buses before the mass of rocks and mud came down the slopes. A survivor recalled his horrified ordeal and said he saved himself by the support of the platform and jumped from the bus as it started veering off. Landslides and floods have killed at least 91 people in Nepal since mid-June. Landslides and flash floods are common in mostly mountainous Nepal during the monsoon season and kill hundreds of people every year. The annual monsoon rains, which started since mid-June, would normally continue until mid-September. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend.